Hey guys, it's Danny. Hope you all had a great weekend. As you can hear, my cold is still not completely gone. I'm still slightly nasal, but it's okay. Slowly but surely, it is going away. Today, I really, really want to address that little pest issue we discovered in our last video. If you remember, on one of my Cattleya type orchids, I found some scale insect, which is slightly new for me. You guys might know I had my fair share of pests in the past, such as spider mites, mealybugs, bush snails, but when it comes to scale insect, I don't have all that much experience, so I'm a little bit excited. I know that sounds weird, but I am going to learn something new, gather some more experience, and best of all, hopefully help some of you out. So let's get to the orchid, see how the problem looks like, and what to do about it. So here is my orchid. At a first glance, you can tell there's something wrong with it, but it doesn't necessarily have to do with the scale insect. I received this orchid quite recently, a few months ago, and it didn't have a good root system. I don't actually think it has roots, or rather had roots when I received it. In the meantime, it created a new growth, which has some roots. You're gonna see the root system is not super, super advanced, but all of this yellowing of the leaves that you can see here I do believe it's caused by dehydration and just stress overall. Orchids are actually known to shed some of their older structures, typically leaves, when they're dehydrated in particular. So I don't believe this is caused by the insect, however this might just well be. So let's just take a look at this insect because I'm pretty sure you don't see it just yet. Now scale insects are not easy to spot unless it's a very heavy infestation. And furthermore, this particular one is not easy to spot because it camouflages itself really, really well. Now, with the help of one of my viewers, I can actually pinpoint the variety, can I call it like that, of scale that we have here. So apparently we are dealing with the Boyd's Duval scale in which the male is a very fluffy tiny insect and the female creates a sort of a cocoon when it lays the eggs and that is exactly what I saw in my orchid. I also researched it myself and I'll share with you an article that I found interesting on the internet. You'll find it in the description. Indeed, I do believe we're dealing with this type of scale. So thank you so much for the tip. Very, very useful. The problem with the scale is it kind of camouflages itself in some species, like this Cattleya, in the dried sheets around the pseudobulbs. If you have Cattleyas, you know that once the pseudobulb matures, this leafy structure that helped it mature will just become dry and typically we remove them. I have so many orchids that I'm not really on top of it, but whenever I can, I do remove these sheets. If I don't remove them in time, they actually degrade themselves and become this crumbly, flaky sheath that you see here. Well, I do believe this insect imitates exactly this sheath because this is mostly where I found it. Here on the pseudobulb, the base of it, and also on the rhizome. So I plan to eradicate it in two ways. One is mechanical, just removing it myself with my hands. And the second is yet another mechanical way, but this time using my oil solution that works absolutely fantastic with spider mites and mealybugs even. I'll link you to my DIY solution down below in the description and also in an info card. However, manual removal is really, really important as well. So first and foremost, let's unpot the orchid and just try to remove as many of them as possible. As you guys saw, the insect was actually crawling on the lower part of the pseudobulb, affecting... Oh wow, look at this. Do you see this? This is actually not mold. It's the insect and probably the male insect. So it is important to actually unpot the orchid because this insect can actually reside on the rhizome and the very base of the pseudobulb. Now, this orchid was actually two orchids. It happens sometimes that in the same pot you will find multiple orchids, especially when you have very young seedlings, you will find that in the same pot you can actually have multiple individuals and... Oh my goodness. Oh, look at this. Oh, wow. I have another pseudobulb just doing this on this side. This is what scale does actually. It munches on the pseudobulb until you can see we end up with something like this. So yeah, the issue is actually pretty severe, but I have no doubt that we can save this orchid. No worries, it looks bad, but we'll fix it. 
So I'm going to remove as much as possible this medium, even though it's brand new, I definitely will not reuse it because it actually is infested. Even though the insects themselves don't live in the medium and don't feed in the medium, inevitably some of them will fall. So I will remove as much as possible, I will throw away this medium and I will take the trash bag outside. It's not staying in the gross space. All right, so this is as much as I want to do because let's not forget this is a sick orchid, rootless orchid. And you know what? It's not gonna get repotted. And this is what I was talking about. You can see here where the colony of the scale was. I do seem to have a few of them just fallen on the medium. It's not actually mold. These are the male insects, even though most probably you will not find them deep inside the pot, on the surface at least, they're here, and I just don't wanna take any risks. I'm gonna throw away all of this medium we just removed from the orchid. It is a good idea to disinfect the working tray as well. I'm using alcohol. Pots can totally be reused. You absolutely do not need to throw pots just because you have an infestation or molds in the medium or anything of the sorts. I like to use a bathroom cleaner solution and I'm sure this eliminates most bacteria, viruses and other pathogens. So particularly with plastic pots, definitely reuse them, do not throw them away. If you have clay pots, a little bit more difficult because they're porous, but those ones can be cleaned as well, soaked in boiling water or put in the oven or things of the sorts. The medium though, if it's our organic, it needs to go. Side note, boiling organic medium, not the greatest of idea. You're degrading it, you're breaking its integrity, so it's just not going to last as long. I did try to boil organic medium back, back in the day. Wasn't a good experience. I don't recommend it. Not sure about ovening. I would just go with fresh new medium. Right, okay, so first order of business. <laughs> Alrighty then. Joey and Maya are actually feeding each other. They're both girls. I don't know how this relationship will work, but they love each other and I'm happy for them. Okay, so first of all, I do want to remove these pseudobulbs. They will actually not do anything anymore. Can you see how just mushed out they are here? So what I will do is actually go at the base and cut the rhizome, remove them completely. Oh. Okay, the connection was not looking good anyway. Luckily for me, these are older pseudobulbs. Yeah, can you see how mushy the rhizome became? And this particular pseudobulb is mushy up until here. So these guys go in the trash. I think I will also remove this pseudobulb because it's very, very old, it is affected, and it's already on its way out. Sympodial orchids, as they grow, they typically naturally shed these old structures, particularly the seedling structures. So this is not really helping the orchid in any way. It's okay for us to remove it. And I think I have some questionable roots as well, which I will remove. And the next thing to do is to remove these sheets. I'm pretty sure that these are hiding some scale. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of these dried sheets. This new growth, can you see we have a green sheath around it? I shall not remove this because it plays a very important role in the formation of the pseudobulb. So if I remove it, I risk actually completely damaging the new growth and the bulb formation. So for now, we're gonna let it be. I don't suspect there are any scales here because this is still very, very tight around the leaf. So I'm only going to remove these dried ones, which as you can see, they're coming off very easy. P.S. For those of you who don't know, Jackie and Maya were wedding birds. Somebody tried to release them and it didn't work out so great. If you know ringneck doves, the white ones, you know what I mean. They're not wild birds. So they were very, very young. They didn't fly. They were very confused. So I received them and decided to adopt them. And they were already imprinted on each other initially. I thought they were a pair. That's why I named them Joey and Maya. But apparently they're both girls. They're very sweet. They preen each other, they feed each other. Joey laid eggs twice. Maya not so much, but I see she's starting to fancy the idea of eggs. And to be fully honest, I had breeding doves before and with the babies, oh, it's a nightmare. I get very attached to them. I'm always worried where they're gonna end up. I had bad experiences with people. I, no, don't wanna go through the process yet again. So I am happy with their relationship. Alrighty, so we have some good news and some bad news. 
I do believe that this section or division of the orchid is not savable. Can we see what's going on here? We have a very, very mushy cane right here at the base. This is the scale insect, the cocoon from which baby insects will sprout. Very poor choice of words, I know. So yeah, sadly, this division will not remain like this. I will remove this part and treat this as a back bulb. Can we see we have an available eye here? This can actually sprout into a new growth, but we don't have roots. And in the end, this will be a back bulb. It's gonna take a while until it becomes its own plant. Since there's no leaf either, energy resources are very, very low, but we're gonna save it. It's just gonna take a few years to even become mature enough to bloom but it's okay. The good news is this side looks pretty good. I don't see any mushiness going on, so I can definitely hang on to this as a division, but can we see the scale here? We're gonna fix that. So first off, let's cut away this pseudobulb. I'm gonna go here at the connection on the rhizome and make a clean cut. This is my back bulb. As much as possible, whenever I make divisions, or separate back bulbs, I try to go as close to the previous pseudobulb so I leave a little bit of rhizome here. If I would cut very close to the actual bulb here, I'm in danger of cutting the base of the bulb, which is responsible for root production and I'm pretty sure this would destroy the pseudobulb. So if you're ever in the situation, just try to leave as much of the rhizome attached to the pseudobulb can you see that at the base it's bulbous a little bit? Yeah, go behind that and find the actual rhizome, which is thinner. Oh, my girls are all sorts of happy. So manually removing the scale obviously implies just removing all of those insects. And I will be using some cotton discs and also some rubbing alcohol. They can obviously be removed with just a wet cotton disc or cotton ball or a little napkin, but they can actually go on surfaces. So I will try to limit a little bit spreading by using alcohol. This will eliminate them on touch, which is what we want. I might use some cotton buds as well, we're gonna see. So pretty much what I will do is get one of these discs, soak it in rubbing alcohol and start to remove them from the orchids. A little side note, I do believe isopropyl alcohol is less damaging to orchids because it's not as drying as ethyl alcohol which I have as well. So this one can be used as well, but be mindful with this one. It's a little bit more harsh. You can dilute it a little bit with water and I'm not referring to the degrees. You'll find on the market 70 degrees, 96 degrees. Whatever concentration you have, I would still dilute it with a little bit of water just to be sure. The isopropyl on the other hand, I don't think you need to dilute. You can use it as it is. So here we go. Let's start to get rid of these guys. So can you see what remains on my disc? This greeny, browny residue. Oh, yeah, these are the insects. And I will go ahead and do this for the entirety of the pseudobulb all the way to the rhizome. Alternatively, you can actually put alcohol in a spraying bottle and just spray the entire plant, but I don't have a spray bottle available right now. Okay, so this one was pretty easy. Let's go ahead and see what to do about this guy. I will start with the most affected part. Can you see how I just removed those cocoons? And you can rest assured that they're gone. If I would use water, I would have to be careful where things drop because obviously water doesn't do anything to them. So I prefer alcohol. A little side note, I would be very, very careful with any type of alcohol around the roots. Alcohol is drying, so definitely do not do this on the roots. Scale don't really stay on the roots. Just focus on the pseudobulbs, on the rhizome, and also on the leaves. Scales will be on the leaves as well. So I'll go ahead and clean the entirety of my orchid and come back when I'm done. All right, so I manually removed as many insects as I possibly could, definitely everything that I saw. What do we do about the roots? Because yes, 
The insects do not sit on the root system, but what if one of them fell? Maybe just now when I was cleaning the pseudobulbs. Well, I will use hydrogen peroxide, 3%. In most areas, you will find the solution at the pharmacy, and if you find the 3% concentration, that one can be used as it is, straight from the bottle. I've been using this for many, many, many years. It's kept me safe from bush snails, and I do believe it could help with scale as well. Definitely will not harm many things so I will spray the root system in the base of the rhizome with hydrogen peroxide. If you ever use the solution you will hear it starting to fizz, that's perfectly fine, it means it's working and after the initial reaction all you'll have left is oxygen and water so you don't need to rinse anything. And let's see if you can actually hear. Next, I prepared my oily solution. Again, you have a link in the description with the recipe and how I make it, and I will spray everything except the root system. Side note, you can see my orchid has a flower spike with buds. They might be compromised due to the oil, but it's okay. The most important thing is for the orchid to be okay. So I'll spray the entirety of my orchid, and I chose to spray the oily solution other than alcohol or hydrogen peroxide because it has longer lasting effects. The oil residue will remain on the plant and it really does such a good job with spider mites and even mealybugs that I'm hoping it will just make the scale's life a little bit harder or even very hard and overall just help me out with containing the infestation. Again, no need to rinse anything, the solution will dry out on its own. All right, so I will not be repotting the orchid because if I didn't manage to get rid of all of the insects, we're just going to repeat history. I'm gonna need to unpot it, throw away the medium, not something we want. So what I chose to do is to lay the orchid and the back bulb on a bed of sphagnum moss, which I can keep moist. It will hydrate the orchid, it has contact with the root system, but it gives me the possibility to look at the rhizome and the base of the pseudobulbs and see if everything is okay. I can also treat it very fast if they do come back, and if I see that everything is okay for about two months or so, I can definitely go ahead and repot it. This will not hurt the orchid because this is an epiphytic orchid, it doesn't really matter if it's in the air, it's an air plant, quotation marks, at the end of the day. So it's perfectly fine and the moss will help me out with watering, I will not need to spray the roots every day or things of the sorts. And obviously I will not put this orchid together with my other orchids, it's always a good idea to quarantine either new orchids, either sick orchids, preferably in a different room. I cannot. I'll keep it in the same room, but on the other side of the greenhouse. And with that said, I think it's time to end. Thank you so much for watching. I will keep you up to date. Fingers crossed that we're gonna have a very speedy recovery and that the blooms will open. I'm very tempted to remove them, but the orchid is not in shock. It didn't have roots to begin with. The roots did not attach to anything. They did not suffer movement. They don't know what actually happened because I didn't detach anything from them. So there is a chance we're gonna see it in bloom. But we'll see, I'll keep you up to date. Again, thank you so much for watching. Hope you found this useful. And you know the drill, like or dislike this video below. Subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials, experiments, and other fun orchid subjects. Currently, I have an issue with my merch store. I don't like Teespring anymore. I had major issues with ordering my samples. They never arrived for five months, so the store is done. I'm not working with them anymore. I'm currently looking for a different store, but it might take a while. So yeah, just letting you guys know in case you see that the links don't work. So with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.